All right, so today I want to introduce you to the black cream ball python. It's a pretty interesting combination of genes. It actually consists of the fire, the vanilla, and the black pastel. Essentially what it is, it's a vanilla cream going to the dark side by adding the black pastel to the vanilla cream. Makes a pretty interesting combination. And usually when I think of vanilla cream, it's actually one of my favorite combinations. And a lot of times you can actually take the vanilla cream and add genes like pastel and make some really bright combinations but on the flip side you can actually take it to the dark side you can actually use the black pastel and you can also use the cinnamon to get a similar effect and it's kind of interesting if you look at the black pastel and the cinnamon compared to some of your other dark genes working it into the vanilla cream you get a completely different effect that you really can't reproduce with any other dark genes that I've seen so today I want to jump over the internet and I want to show you the potential of the black cream ball python all right, so I'm gonna jump over here on morphmarket.com and I wanna start with this snake right here. So this one's actually listed as a fire or a vanilla. And you know, pretty much any snake that's listed as a fire slash vanilla, you know that that snake actually came from a vanilla cream, which is the combination of the fire and the vanilla. One of my favorite combinations. And if you actually take a vanilla cream, you breed it to something else, half the offspring come out as fire, half come out as vanilla, and you really can't tell the difference between the fires and the vanillas and usually you definitely can tell you actually have either a fire or a vanilla because you have this really strong head stamp on the top of the snake which in a lot of cases it looks kind of like the paw print of a cat and a lot of a lot of this almost looks like a cat stepped on the top on the head of the snake and left a paw print right on the top it's a pretty good indication that you have a fire or a vanilla and usually if you actually compare these to a normal they'll actually be a lot better brighter than a normal ball python with a really strong head stamp. So if you actually take a fire and breed it to a vanilla, 25% of the time you'll actually get the vanilla cream. And this is what a vanilla cream looks like. It has a really scrambled up pattern. Almost looks kind of as jumbled up as like a low white pie or something like that. Kind of an interesting comparison between the two. As a matter of fact, it'd be interesting to look at, you know, different combinations that have completely different genes with similar visual appearance might be a good idea for a future video to actually do like a side-by-side -side comparison of you know like the vanilla creams and the disco infernos and the low white pides all those kind of have a really similar look as far as kind of this jumbled up pattern and one of my favorite combinations with the vanilla cream is if you actually work pastel into the vanilla cream and essentially what you get is you get a snake that looks like this that's a lot more yellow and it's a lot more cleaner usually because you have the combination of the pastel and the fire that really cleans things up but that actually goes towards the bright side of things if you want to go towards the dark side completely opposite you want to use a dark gene and I actually just kind of randomly stumbled into this combination today and th that's the combination of working black pastel into the vanilla cream and has a pretty amazing effect working this gene into it and essentially what the black pastel is it's actually a dark gene you work it into combinations and it really darkens the background of a lot of your combinations and the black pastel is pretty close to the cinnamon you'll actually see in a lot of black pastels a lot of times you'll actually see it has more of kind of this almost like a more of a bronze colored compared to a lot of your cinnamons but the black pastels can be extremely variable from one example of the gene to the other. So here's what happens if you take the black pastel and you work it into the vanilla cream. Take a look at this. I actually just randomly stumbled on it. I was like, what in the world is that snake? There's only a few of them over here at Morph Market. It's a pretty amazing combination. This is essentially what it is. It's just the vanilla cream that's really darkened from the black pastel, which is pretty amazing. So take a look at this. You can actually take the, the pastel and work it into the black cream with the black pastel, the vanilla, and the fire. And in this case, you actually get a totally different effect than you would actually expect working pastel into the mix. So take a look at this. This is what happens when you work pastel into the black cream. You actually get the black pastel vanilla scream. I guess you could actually call this one the black scream, which is a lot of times they'll actually abbreviate 
abbreviate it to, you know, whatever gene and then just scream on the end. So, so essentially what the scream is, that's the combination of the fire, the vanilla and the pastel. And usually when you put black in front of it, that means that you have black pastel in the mix. I thought it was kind of interesting, some of these common names, but essentially what's going on here is if you actually take a look at some of the genes and look at the visual appearance, it's pretty unexpected at first glance if you're not used to the combination of genes. So what's actually happening is the black pastel is interacting with the pastel to make the pewter. And the pewter is really visually dominant when you work it into other combinations. A lot of times you'll actually get kind of a silver colored snake, sometimes kind of a, almost like a coppery colored silver snake, depending on the version of the black pastel that you're using. But when you work other things into the black pewter, the black pewter really dominates the visual appearance. You can definitely tell on this one the color is really strong from the combination of the black pastel and the pastel. So if you actually stripped out the black pastel on this one, you'd actually get a really super bright yellow snake. That would be the vanilla scream. It's kind of interesting how all the genes work together. So take a look at this. You can actually use cinnamon in place of the black pastel to get a similar effect. We're making, uh, I guess, like the cinnamon version of the black cream using cinnamon instead of black pastel. So keep in mind the cinnamon is allelic with black pastel. And if you actually have a cinnamon black pastel, it pretty much looks like the super cinnamon and the super black pastel in a lot of cases. Although a lot of people, uh, pretty much hands down, a lot of people will agree that they're different genes, the cinnamon and the black pastel. Usually the black pastels have a little bit more of a, a different color as a standalone gene and they tend to be a little bit darker than most of your cinnamons and combinations. But take a look at this. If you actually take the cinnamon and work it into the vanilla cream, take a look at this crazy snake. This is one of the craziest ones I've actually seen over here on Morphon. As a matter of fact, when I saw that first one with the black cream, I was like, that is one of the craziest combinations I've seen. Then I started looking at all the different vanilla cream combinations with all the dark genes, trying to work other dark genes into the vanilla cream so you can see what effect the darks have on this combination. And this is probably one of the most breathtaking dark combinations that I've actually seen over here on Morphargo. As a matter of fact, I actually found another one that's just like this one. So take a look at this. This has some orange that's coming up on the sides. I found another one almost exactly the same that has a lot more orange coming up on the side and the top of the snake. That is some of the craziest combinations. So this is actually just a vanilla cream cinnamon, the same exact genes. And if you look at the prices of these, these aren't too expensive. As a matter of fact, this one sold for $400 plus shipping, which is pretty amazing. So actually it was poking around at other genes, other dark genes mixed into the vanilla cream. And some of these I'm familiar with. Let me tell you, if you actually work a lot of these other dark genes into the vanilla cream, you get a completely different visual appearance in the combination. So here is the leopard and the leopard's one of my favorite genes. Works really well with a lot of pretty much any other gene in ball pythons that makes some amazing combinations. The leopard is a dark gene, so it'll really bring a lot of the darkness into a lot of your combinations and it really scrambles up the patterns. It's a really strong pattern enhancing gene. So here's what happens if you take the leopard and you work it into the vanilla cream. Take a look at this. You get a completely different appearance working leopard into the vanilla cream. And this is a really impressive snake. You can make some pretty amazing combinations working leopard into a lot of your combinations, but you get a completely different effect than working either the cinnamon or the black pastel into the vanilla cream. All right, so it is time for the question of the day. And Stud Bourbon asks, how long should you wait to handle a snake after they've eaten? And that is a very good question. So I'd say most people probably recommend waiting at least 24 to 48 hours to really handle your snake after you feed them a meal. And there's a couple of factors that come into play. Probably the biggest one is how big of a rodent did you feed your snake? So for example, if I actually took Bobby here around my neck and fed him a really small rodent compared to the size of the snake, I would imagine that I could handle the snake a lot sooner 
sooner than if I fit him like a really big rat where you can actually see a really big bulge in the side of Bobby. I'd say if you actually see a bulge from a rodent in your snake, you definitely shouldn't handle them. And if you actually feed him a really big rodent, I would actually wait probably three days to handle that snake, at least three days. And also it really depends on what type of snake you have. So I actually had my reticulated pythons as hatchlings when they were really small. And let me tell you, a really young reticulated python has an extremely high metabolism where you can feed them an incredibly large rodent where they have this huge bulge in the side of the snake. And within 24 hours, it's completely gone and they're looking for more food. So I would think with reticulated pythons, you probably could handle them a lot sooner than with ball pythons. Of course, you know, reticulated pythons, once they get really big and you're feeding like rabbits or something like that, and the metabolism really slows down as like a full grown reticulated python, you may even want to wait longer than three days. You know, if you feed them something really big, it could take even up to a week before you can handle that snake. And the, pretty much the one thing you want to avoid is that snake regurgitating, throwing up the rodent. And it seems like if you actually have a snake that starts throwing up the rodents, it seems like they're more sensitive to throwing up in the future. So you kind of want to avoid it in the first place and try to avoid handling your snake too soon after you feed them. So that is pretty much it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.